Good evening, everybody, and welcome to Todd Clint's SharePoint Netcast number 186, recorded live Monday, January 27th. I am your host, and I've once again been snubbed for the Best Reggae Artist of the Year by the Grammys, again, but I'm Todd Clint. Um, and tonight's, uh, tonight's performance uh, and all of this stuff is, uh, is brought to you by Rackspace. You can go uh, see what they got going on at sharepoint.rackspace.com. Um, normally, they uh, provide the background and all that, but we'll, uh, <laughs> we'll get into that later on why all that's changed. Uh, but at sharepoint.rackspace.com, you've got our training schedule. Uh, you've got little tra training uh, videos and things like that. You've got white papers we've written. Uh, all that kind of stuff. So uh, go out to SharePoint.RagSpace.com. We're always adding new stuff, and so uh, go out there and see what uh, see what we got going on. For the produ for production notes tonight, um, production's been going pretty well. Uh, I got the blog post out for 185 late. Got it out this afternoon. That was sort of intentional, sort of on purpose. Uh, it went a little late. That was accidental. But then I put out uh, a blog post I'm going to talk about later in the show and um, then didn't want to drop that one down by putting the netcast blog post up there. So I kind of let that one set uh, for a while. Um, so, <laughs> so uh, but that's... Um, but that's out there now, so I apologize for that. I'll try to get on that uh, sooner. You'll probably also notice if you are... Um, an audio-only listener, you're probably noticing fewer hops this week. The sound hopefully sounds a little better. If you're a video listener, you are uh, uh, probably noticed the big black thing here in front. This is a pop filter. It's something that professionals, and apparently myself, use. And uh, it keeps some of the, the B's and the P's, the big aspirated sounds, from uh, popping through. And this is courtesy of Jack Frew. He uh, sent this to me. Apparently, a, a subtle hint that, that my audio needed some help. So thanks to Jack for this. Uh, hopefully, this is good, pretty good. This first week, I've used it. Might have to move it around a little bit. Uh, but so far, it sounds so good. I did a couple of uh, test, test recordings that sounded good. So thanks. Thanks to Jack for that. You'll also probably notice if you're doing the uh, video version of this uh, that I got a haircut. No, that's not true. Uh, the, the background looks a little different this week, and that is because I've been filming some things here. So there's a, a rough green screen behind me. It looked a lot better until my cat decided to try to tear it off of the wall. But um, for the SharePoint conference, they sent an email out to all of the, all the speakers here a week or so ago saying that they wanted us to make promotional videos for each of our sessions. So that when you went to the SharePoint conference site and went to a session, you'd see the description of the time and all that kind of stuff, and they want to embed videos into there. So they asked us all to make videos. Shane and I have never been one to, either of us have ever been ones to have good judgment. And when they sent us a thing asking us to make videos for them, uh, we decided we would make some videos for them. So we have three sessions at the SharePoint conference. And so that means that we get to write, or get to write and star and direct in three videos. And, um, that's kind of what this was for. So those of you that follow me on Twitter or our friends on Facebook, you saw some kind of preliminary shots from some of that stuff last week. But that's what this green screen is here for. I think we're going to reshoot some of it tomorrow. And uh, so I left that up. But that's why uh, well, that's here. Now, uh, if it wouldn't have gotten all torn up when I produced this, I would probably put, you know, beach or something behind that. But uh, didn't have the chance. So it's just an ugly green screen. And this green screen technology, I know you're probably asking yourself, where does he get all these great expensive uh, toys and resources? This is a sheet that I bought at Walmart. I bought, because uh, because these days, the software, the video software is so good that it doesn't actually need to be green. It can be any color. And But this was, so you don't have to get the exact, uh, exact green color. So that's what that is. So hopefully... Pretty soon, once we get these videos done and all that, we'll be able to send the links out for that. But hopefully, they'll be funny. We've got uh, we've got some great ideas. We think they're funny. We crack ourselves up, and that's most of uh, most of it. Ellis uh, in the chat room is saying he sent them a video and he's been banned. I believe that Ellis. I've seen some of your stuff. I can I can see how that would happen. But look forward to those videos when they come out. They will hopefully be pretty entertaining. Right now, we let's move on to some topics here. The big news today, and not something that I would, well, maybe would have covered, 
but unless you've been living under a rock, you probably heard some news, a little thing about SkyDrive officially being named, renamed to OneDrive. So to kind of keep you up, uh, up to speed, last year the, the company in the UK, Sky, the television company, Rupert uh, Murdoch's company, sued Microsoft for use of the word Sky because they thought that uh, there was some, some overlapping things now when, when you have trademarks and things like that, especially if you've got a, a common word like Sky, you can't own the word Sky, but you can own the word Sky in certain contexts. And so it wasn't that SkyDrive had the word Sky in it, that's okay, but what Sky was uh, suing about was the fact that they thought there was overlapping, and, and they, they underestimated uh, their customers, and they thought it was possible for people to get confused when seeing SkyDrive and thinking it had to do with, uh, with Sky, the, the company. So Microsoft was in a, a battle with them, and last summer, I guess, they relented, and they said, okay, you guys are going to win, we will... We will rename SkyDrive to something. So uh, that's been hanging over their heads for the last nine months or so now. Today they finally announced that the official new name for SkyDrive will be OneDrive. And the official new name for SkyDrive Pro will be OneDrive for Business. So I was glad to see that they stuck with equally confusing names for the SharePoint part of this. So it's going to be called OneDrive for Business. It used to be SkyDrive Pro. Now, one of the things that they said, and I can't remember if it's in the blog post that I linked here or if it was another one, but they said, you know, same service. Or they said, uh, it's just different branding, uh, same same service. I'm like, boy, I, uh, I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, honestly. SkyDrive's not bad, but uh, it's it's got some lacks. I, I, I started having... Um, I started doing my cloud storage stuff, you know, a couple years ago with Dropbox. So sort of everything gets measured against Dropbox. And SkyDrive kind of falls short in a couple of places. And so the saying it's the same service, just a different name, is not necessarily a complimentary thing. But I'm guessing at some point one of the on-premises patches is going to rename the little bit up in the header there that says SkyDrive. Hopefully it's not just going to say OneDrive and be confusing like it is now when people... Uh, click your you know SkyDrive it doesn't take you to SkyDrive it takes you to SkyDrive Pro but they've also been saying on Twitter that uh, there's going to be some SkyDrive Pro announcements at the SharePoint conference so we'll probably hear some more about that but uh, yes yeah, SkyDrive will now be OneDrive it looks like it's going to be all the same so uh, thought I would uh, thought I would bring that up again not exactly what I would normally cover here but it does have a bit of a, uh, a SharePoint uh, reference to it Got uh, a few things this week came from viewer mail that I got, and so this is the first one. I got an email from somebody, and I've since deleted the email. I've been trying to keep my email inbox low, so I've started, uh, started this habit where after I respond to an email, I delete it, which is good because it keeps some of the crud out of my, uh, uh, my inbox. The bad news is then when I go back days later to try to find the thing that I want to talk about, that email's not there anymore, uh, so I apologize. But somebody sent me an email or left a comment on my blog or something asking about warm-up strips, uh, scripts, and they said, um, you know, do I have to do this for every web app? You know, you said that you have to do it for team sites and publishing sites, so I have to do it for every web app. So I kind of thought I would talk a little bit about uh, that, the warm-up script. Not a lot, because we've, we've talked about it a few times. But the answer to them is yes, you have to do it for each of your web apps. If you're, and depending on whether your web apps are in the same app pool or not. The reason I brought up the templates was because um, when, you, when you're doing the warm-up scripts, you're having the just-in-time compiler compile code for that page if it hasn't been compiled and if it isn't already being cached in your uh, W3WP, your worker process. Um, and so since it's different code behind a publishing site than behind a team site, than behind a blog, behind a wiki, whatever, you have to hit each one of those to get those pieces of code to compile. And if you have multiple web apps that are in multiple app pools, then yes, you need to hit them all because, again, it's a different W3, WP process, so you need to fire up in each one of those. If you have multiple web apps in the same app pool, uh, you're fine. It doesn't matter. Uh, because it's uh, it's going to be there, and it's easy enough to check. You can when this happens, 
if you have, you know, so go into Task Manager on your server and you'll see your W3WP process. There's a little bit of PowerShell you can run that will tell you which one of those, if there's multiples, is a specific app pool. I think I've logged that, maybe, I don't know. So you can look at one, you can see exactly which one of those is the one for your SharePoint site and then hit different kinds of pages. And if you hit a page that's not been cached already, so like do an IIS reset or whatever, you'll see a bunch of csc.exe uh, processes popping up. That's the client side compiler. That's the thing that's, that's compiling the code and putting it in the app pool. So you can, um, and if you hit a team site, use that to warm it up, then you can you know, hit a publishing site, see if you see those CSCs pop up, see if you see that app pool pop up. If so, then those are different ones. So just kind of want to bring that up a little bit. When I was looking at that, I remembered that Trevor Seward has a blog post from last year about an IIS module that you can use to keep your app pools warm if you want to. I've never used it myself, but it seemed like the kind of thing that would make sense in this discussion, so I got a link to that. At his brand spanking new URL, thesharepointfarm.com. Uh, and that uh, is from June of 2012. There's a bunch of different ways to handle this. I've got a blog post on how to do it. But again, if you've got different app pools and different templates, you have to hit one of every combination if you want to have the, uh, the fastest experience for your users. So thanks for that uh, tweet or email or comment or, uh, or whatever. I don't know. Uh, Ellis in the chat room is saying that that didn't work for him. I'm guessing that was user error. Having, you know, knowing Ellis, having hung out with him, I'm guessing that was all, uh, all user error there. Um, the next thing that I wanted to talk about, this came up a couple of months ago, the October 2013 cumulative update for SharePoint 2013 broke the performance point designer. And so there's a bunch of things that make all that happen. I don't use performance point a bunch, so I didn't necessarily notice it, but I saw that Paul Cumsey had a blog post on it. And you guys know me when it comes to patches and the things that they do wrong. I got this little diary that I keep, so I added that to the wiki for the October 2013 post. And then, uh, sorry, oh, let me bring my notes over here. So a couple of weeks ago, or maybe last week, BJ Fentress sent me a blog post that he's got. He does a bunch of the BI stuff, and he found a workaround for this. So if you have the October 2013 CU, uh, woe is you if you want to do the performance point designer because you can't uninstall CUs. But BJ does have a workaround for this, uh, and that's on his blog. And I have put that on the wiki for the October 2013 uh, patch. So he's got that. I'm not going to go through all the things. There's some files you have to swap out. It seems kind of scary. But if you put that uh, cumulative update on, you can't take it off. If you need Performance Point Designer, you might be willing to do some of those things. But, uh, but it's all there. So thanks to BJ for sending that in. He's a big listener of the show. He sends me stuff all the time. So thanks to that. And again, that is out on the wiki now. And so I see that uh, Teresa Wilson just left the chat room just in time for me to do a bunch of talking about PowerShell, which is probably good uh, because, you know, she's way smarter than I am and she's, you know, the scripting guy's uh, wife. So that way I don't get embarrassed myself quite so much. Let me get my notes up here. All uh, right. So one of the things that I've been doing, oh, so she's still in there. Good night, uh, good night, Teresa. Tell that hi for me. Uh, one of the things that I've been doing, and I mentioned this in my blog posts and, and stuff uh, on, on the netcast here over the last year or so, when I went to the New Media Expo last year, I got some great ideas for new things to do. And so that's why you know my podcast is on YouTube now, and it's got lower thirds, and it's got a little better intro and things like that. These were all things that I was kind of inspired by when uh, when I went to the New Media Expo. But unfortunately, all of these things take more time. And so I kind of got serious about scripting and automating the production of the netcast and, and just different pieces of it because it's just, you know, the less work I have to do, the more likely I'm going to do that work right away and the more quickly it's going to, uh, to go out and all that kind of stuff. So there have been a couple of things that I did, and I think I talked about this a couple of weeks ago. I wrote a really cruddy ugly, crude PowerShell script that I run after the netcast is over. 
and it goes out. It creates a directory. I've got a directory with all my netcasts in it. It goes out, uh, creates a new directory for the, the netcast that I just uh, recorded. It goes out to my videos folder, takes the last video that I recorded, which is the thing over here, copies it over to the new folder, renames it. I've got a notes file that I keep for every netcast that has my descriptions, my times, and all that kind of stuff. Figures out the time of the netcast, takes the time of the video, adds the crap that I put at the beginning, creates the text file, does all this stuff. So I've been running that for a couple of weeks now, uh, and that's been helping get that part uh, going a little quicker. But the next part of the netcast that was really labor intensive was tagging the MP3 files. So I used, again, part of the simplicity. Two years ago, I was recording the video with Cam or with uh, the Logitech viewer, but I was recording the audio with Audacity, which is a great free audio recorder, editor, and all that kind of stuff. And I had all of the MP3, um, MP3 tags built in there, so when I rendered out the... Uh, the mp3 file. It had all the tags. I still had to have the cover art, but it had a bunch of the other stuff uh, built in. But again, a part of making things more streamlined, now I've moved over to just recording the video and then exporting the audio out in Camtasia. That didn't used to work very well. It used to create some crappy mp3s. The headers were wrong. But the new version of Camtasia fixes that, so I switched back to that. One less step that I got to do. But the downside is Camtasia doesn't put any mp3 tags in. So I would have to go through and do that all manually every week. And it was kind of frustrating because every piece of information that I was putting in those MP3 tags was information that existed someplace else. And so I was, that, that, that's just inefficient. I'm lazy by nature. So having to do all that kind of stuff kind of stinks. And I've been wanting for a year now probably to automate all that. And so of course, where do I go? I go to PowerShell. PowerShell can do everything. But there were no great ways to edit MP3 tags in PowerShell. So I finally um, found some stuff last week, or the week before, I forget, and was able to take all that uh, and automate it. So my frustration is your gain. And so I blogged all that. And what it comes down to is there is a DLL, a library called um, Taglib. So since, you know, PowerShell is all calm and all that kind of stuff. You're able to use reflection and just load that uh, that assembly up. And then once you do that, you can create these taglib objects, which are your MP3 files, and then set all the stuff. So with my netcast, there's some very specific fields that I want to set. I want to set the album. So if people have multiples, they all fall in together. What year, the title, I put the track number in. So you know, this one will be track number 186, last week was 185, put the album artist in, and then for a comment, I put a link to my blog, That's, and then I put my cover art in there. So I was able to, with the tag live, uh, set that up and automate all that. So it does all that. I've got a script that does it. Right now, I'm putting those values in. I'm copying and pasting them out of something else, but uh, eventually... I'll hook it into that script that I talked about in the first place where all that stuff's in a file, and it'll just pull that out uh, uh, when I do that. So the MP3 will go out, I'll run a script, and then it'll tag all that. And that's just one less thing that I have to do. The MP3s get up there pretty quick now. And when it comes to the editing, the MP3s go pretty quick because I've, I've kind of, what I used to do was bring the video in, you know, put the intro in and all that kind of stuff. I ended up making a template for that in Camtasia. So now I have a netcast template that has all of the front matter in there. I load that up, save it as the new netcast name, drop my video in. So that's good. Um, but then I would go through and put the lower thirds in and, and figure out the times where all the URLs and everything, and then spit out the video and the audio. Well, what I realized was the audio doesn't change <laughs> after I drop that in because you can't see the lower thirds in the audio. So another thing that I've been doing is as soon as I get the video dropped in and get everything timed up right, I kick the audio out right away and save that up because it doesn't change, and then that gets it out a little sooner. So trying to make this whole process a little bit, uh, a little bit better. So um, hopefully that, uh, that helps some other people out there. I got, uh, got a few tweets on it when I sent it out, so that was good. But uh, that was kind of cool, so I'll probably play that a little bit more. I'm also a big music fan. I've got thousands and thousands and thousands of MP3 files, mostly all legal, I mean, for the most part. But a bunch of them, like when you buy them from Amazon, if, uh, if the MP3, if, if the album has swearing words in it, it'll say explicit. 
and in the in the the MP3 tag in the title and some other dumb stuff like that I just don't like. So what I'll probably do after I've played with this a little bit more and get the the flow figured out, I'll probably go through and fix all those tags and all those MP3 files that I bought. Um, so in the chat room, Jared is saying that I and somebody else I think uh, mentioned too that I need to automate my RSS posting. Yes, I do. Uh, so to that end, there's a couple of pieces of that. Uh, number one is actually creating the XML blob for the RSS thing and then uploading it. Part of all of this, copying the file over and creating all that kind of stuff, creates all the information that I need for the actual XML blob for the RSS file. So, Jared, you're absolutely right. You know, maybe the step after next is going to be after everything's done. PowerShell will spit out some XML that I can just, you know, do whatever with. So automating the um, the XML and the RSS will probably happen too. And then the final thing that has to happen is I need to upload it to SharePoint because I can't just use the RSS that SharePoint creates. All my uh, MP3s and all that are in a document library, which I can't expose with RSS, but the RSS built into SharePoint is pretty limited. And I tried to use that for a while. MP3 players don't understand it or any of that kind of stuff. So I have to create that RSS manually. I use a program now to do it. And I forget what the name of that thing is. Absolute RSS Editor. And that's pretty good. It does most stuff. The other thing is since I've collapsed the video into MP4, I don't do, I don't do WMV and I don't do M4V anymore. Now that I've got an MP3 file and an MP4 file, the RSS feed bit, there's only three things that are different now. Uh, so I create one with the RSS program that I've got, and then I copy that out and just do a find with replace because the only thing that changes is the extension of the file goes from MP3 to MP4. The type of file goes from audio slash MP3 to video slash MP4, and then the size of the file changes. So I've got all that uh, figured out. Jack in the chat room is asking, is, X, is RSS XML? Yes, it absolutely is just XML files, or a big XML file. So, and part of that, um, as, I, as we're talking about this, is I'm probably going to collapse and move my RSS files. Right now I've got an MP3 a WMV and an M4V uh, RSS file, and they're in separate folders in SharePoint. Uh, so when I upload them, I have to upload them to three separate places. Probably, I don't know, next month or so, I will collapse that to an audio and a video RSS feed. So there's just two, and then I'm going to move them to the same directory so that it'll be easier to upload, and eventually I'll automate that as well. Um, but fortunately, the RSS <laughs> standard uh, supports the uh, redirection thing, so I will leave the old uh, you know, RSS feeds there, but then put the new location so everything should uh, should just update. So I'm stopping the background. All of that though I will I will uh, blog about because you know that's that's how people get help. The MP3 thing, I wish there'd have been more stuff out there for that when I was doing it. So uh, so I'm glad to have that out there. But as always, uh, you guys I, I like to hear your guys' uh, feedback, so if there's anything about the production and all that, uh, you know, let me know. And in the chat room, they're giving me a bunch of uh, hell for being a closet developer. They're suggesting I should change the name of the show to Clint Sharp, and that's Clint uh, hashtag, uh, things like that. Um, yes, yes. <laughs> I, just, I, I just want you guys to know the amount of abuse that I'll take. I know that I'm going to get abused and called foul names like developer, but I go ahead and share these things with you anyway because that's the kind of giving person that I am. I know walking into it that I'm going to get uh, disrespected and taunted, but I go ahead and do it because I love you folks. So just know that I suffer for my art. <laughs> um, so that's good. But again, if you guys have any suggestions on things that I can change with the production or whatever, uh, let me know. Um, so that does uh, bring up a thing. So we, we talked about this. I think I meant, meant to talk about this in the production notes. I need to change uh, the title of this thing. Right now, it's originally this was Todd Clint's SharePoint Admin Netcast. And then I took Admin out a couple of years ago. And now I need to rename it again because of some of the trademark enforcement stuff that Microsoft's been doing. And again, I'm not mad at it. I'm not doing anything wrong. But I need to get the word SharePoint out of my 
podcast title. And I also want to get the word netcast and podcast out of that. When I was at the New Media Expo when they were doing the podcasting awards, the guy that was emceeing it, you know, it was he was reading a list. It was like, you know, Fred's podcast, Jen's podcast, whatever. He's like, haven't we already gotten to the point where we don't need to have the word podcast at the end of every podcast? So trying to uh, trying to do my part with that. So for the last couple of weeks, I've been talking about, you know, new names. Uh, I think it was Ellis in the chat room. Had some this weekend. He was on a tear. Some of his better ones were uh, Todd Clint's Rack and Roll Up Show, Todd Clint's Talking Head Show, uh, PS Config with Todd Clint, Todd Clint is Not a Developer Show, my favorite, Todd Clint's Audio Ambient Show. That was good. In the chat room before we went live, we talked about a a few more. uh, Mondays with TK and my favorite, uh, to the tune of Afternoon Delight, Monday Night Delight. Uh, and then in the chat room, they're kicking some more uh, around. Before I went live, my cat was trying to destroy my background, so they're having some based on that. Um, I've got a couple in mind that I've been kind of kicking around. I've been talking to Justin, our marketing guy, to see what we can do. So hopefully within the next month or so, we'll have an idea on what we're going to do. We're going to be at SharePoint Conference. We're going to be doing a live showing at SharePoint Conference, so maybe... That's when we'll unveil it. I don't know. But if you do have suggestions, uh, send them to me on Twitter or email me, todd.clint at rackspace.com. Here are kind of my three main requirements for the new show. It has to have my name in it somewhere, and it can't be Todd Clint Sucks. I'm pretty sure that podcast is already taken. Uh, It can't have anybody's product name in it. So it can't have the word Microsoft, it can't have the word SharePoint, it can't have any of that in it. And it also can't have the word Netcast, Podcast, or any of that in it. Um, So Todd Clint's audio ambient show, uh, we probably knock show off, but uh, so so Ellis uh, taking it again, uh, one cast. (laughs) I see what you did there, I see. Um, So if you've got any ideas, like I said, shout them out. I'm not clever enough to think of my own, so go ahead and uh, and throw those out for me. Uh, (laughs) Oh, you hooligans in the chat room. So this is another PowerShell topic here. A friend of mine, Anders Rask, wrote this a while back. I had talked a while back, and I don't remember what it was, and I fight. If I had a good production team, they would have researched this, and I wouldn't have to be floundering right now. Uh, But a while back, maybe a year or so ago, I was rebuilding a search service app for some folks, and they wanted to export their managed properties and import them and all that. And I was going to write some PowerShell to do it because it's it's all XML. It would be easy to do. And I got part of it out but didn't get it all done, and then something shiny caught my attention, and I forgot about it. Well, I didn't realize that probably at the time, Anders Rask had a uh, blog post that did all this. So I uh, linked it up in the chat room, but he has a couple of PowerShell functions that export search mappings, uh, crawl to manage properties, things like that. And um, so yeah, he wrote it for, it looks like for SharePoint 2010 because it came out uh, in July of 2012, but he's got some things to update it for 2013 as well. So if you're uh, got, got a complicated search setup and you want to get some of that stuff out, Andrew's got a pretty good... Uh, pretty good blog post on that. So he did a way better job of uh, this than I ever would have. So hands off to Anders uh, for that. But uh, you can get that at andersrask.sharepointspace.com. And again, it's going to be in the, the, the show notes or it's in the chat room right now. But that uh, that was a pretty good one. I stumbled across that when somebody linked that up this week. I saw that. And, my gosh, that was really great. I wish I'd have known that was there a while back. And our final PowerShell topic for the week today. I've done a lot of PowerShell. It's been a pretty good day, I'll be honest. Uh, Got an email from a listener. Hi, Lisa. And she was doing some moving stuff around, and she was looking for a PowerShell script to copy all of the items from one list in SharePoint to another list in SharePoint. So I had written something that did that a while back, mainly back back when I was still talking about upgrading my blog to SharePoint 2013. But I had written some PowerShell to do that. You know, give it a, a source list, a destination list, and then it would copy all the things through. And if it had attachments, it would do all that as well. 
my thing was kind of ugly. It worked. It was functional, but it was kind of ugly. And I, I necessarily didn't want to share it because I was kind of ashamed of it. But Lisa sent me that email, and I looked at my code, and I'm like, oh, wow, that's uh, that's nothing I should I should give to her because that's just ugly and horrible. So I did a little bit of looking around and come up with a couple of uh, solutions. So one of them I was really embarrassed that I didn't think about. Really, really embarrassed. Um, so one of them was a, uh, a blog post. Let me find it here. And they talk a little bit about it, but they, the first thing that they suggest, and they do it the way that we're all thinking that you would do it, but the first thing that they suggest is to just back the list up. So do a, you know, backup SP uh, or export SP web where you, uh, but then you specify a specific list, back that up to a CMP file or whatever, and restore that. That's PowerShell, that's easy, whatever. Um, but if you're only doing it once, that's not a horrible idea. And so they, they talk about that, and that was something that I hadn't uh, hadn't thought about uh, telling Lisa, but that was a good idea. And then uh, and then they have another lit or another uh, script here that kind of does all of the lists in a web. So it was, you know, the the whole for each deal that we're all so so happy with. So that was interesting. I don't know if that'll fit her exact um, you know situation because she didn't tell me what the whole thing was. But that was one I hadn't thought of, and I was kind of embarrassed. It's that whole thing, you know, once you get an idea in your head how you're going to do something, you forget the obvious things. Uh, so that was one of the obvious ones. So then the other thing that I sent her was a CodePlex project from SharePointScripts.CodePlex.com, and that doesn't do it exactly the way that she wants it, but what it does do is it has one script that exports a list and then another script that imports the list. So you could export it out all out to the file system and then import it all out. Now in the chat room, some folks uh, are asking about this. Doug Hemiger and uh, looks like Chris Givens are talking about this. Doug's asking if it's keeping you know timestamps and versions and all that kind of stuff. That is all going to depend on how you do it. I think if you do the big uh, export, it probably will. If you do the line by line item, it probably won't. That is one of the uh, the tricky parts of all of this. So if you do this. As always, for goodness sakes, do it in a test environment first and pay attention to this. Probably without uh, extraordinary effort, you're going to get all of your list items created right now and by the account you're running PowerShell as. So know that and, and, you know, and, and find out if that's okay, if you care, things like that. Um, but again, Lisa didn't give me a lot of uh, background on her situation. She just, you know, and that, so those would be... Uh, the two things that I sent her in the chat room. We've got some smart folks that have written things. If you have a better solution for this, shoot me an email because I probably won't read through the chat log here. And uh, and let me know, and I'll do a follow-up next week if there are better tools uh, to do this. My listeners deserve that. Lord knows they've suffered enough. On to everybody's favorite, uh, favorite part of the netcast, podcast, whatever. Monday Night Delight. The shameless self-promotion bit. Not a lot has changed. Um, the next thing coming up is the SharePoint Conference. I don't know if you've heard. A little thing going on out in Vegas, the SharePoint Conference. That is March 3rd through the 6th. You can find out about it at SharePointConference.com. Shane and I are doing a pre-conference session on March 2nd. And so we'll be out there a day at a time for that. That's going to be an install, config, just a bunch of admins sitting around, uh, eating candy bars, chatting about installing and configuring SharePoint. So come out for that. That is an extra charge for that pre-conference session. It's all day. costs you $500, I think, uh, something like that. But it'll be a good time. And then we're doing three regular sessions. We're doing a session on using Visual Studio to load test SharePoint 2013. We've had to do some of that stuff here internally for different environments that we've rolled out, so it seemed like something that was uh, that was good. So this just in, you'll remember where you were when you heard about this. Jared just got confirmed. He'll be at the SharePoint conference too. So everybody in the chat room, uh, clap for Jared. He'll be at the SharePoint conference. Thanks, Jared. Um, so we're going to be doing the load testing one. We're also going to be doing a upgrade session, nuts and bolts of upgrading. And then third, we'll be doing a PowerShell session for uh, SharePoint on-premises and online. Excuse me. So we'll be doing those three sessions. Now, that is not all. 
it would be a boring conference if all we did was sit around and talk about uh, our sessions. So at some point during the, the conference, I checked again today, they haven't nailed all the times down, but uh, I'll, be, I'll be recording this whole big mess here live at some point at the SharePoint conference. So once I get the time and the location and all that kind of stuff, I'll let you guys know. A lot of you folks in the chat room are going to be at the SharePoint conference. It will hurt my heart if you... Uh, if you don't show up, but again, we'll uh, we'll be doing that as soon as I know the details on that. I'll blog it and tweet it, shout from the mountaintops. We'll be doing that. Uh, second, I'm going to be doing something for the folks at Nintex. They're going to have a booth there, and I'm going to be doing some things with them. I've been talking to my buddy Mike Fitzmorris. Haven't got that all nailed down yet, but I think uh, there's going to be something going on there. Rackspace, I assume, is going to have a booth. I haven't seen any plans, but uh, I assume that's going to be there. For those of you who um, are going to be at the SharePoint conference, whether you know me or whether you've never met me before in my life, or your life, or anybody's life for that matter, come find me. I'm going to be all over. Um, but I'm a pretty friendly guy. Everybody in the chat room will uh, will attest to that. So come up, introduce yourself, uh, you know, shake my hand, and we, we can chat for a bit. You can tell me what you like about the netcast, if there is anything. Uh, you might have to lie to tell me what you like about it. But absolutely, I'm... I'm very, uh, very approachable, very friendly. So if you're at the SharePoint conference and you see me, by all means, come over and uh, and say, hey, I would, I would love to chat with you. And there'll be all kinds of things going on. There's going to be the, you know, the party out there and all that. So if you're at the SharePoint conference, we'll, we have to hook up. I might try to do some kind of, uh, what do they call them, tweet ups or whatever. The problem with these kind of events is every night's got like 400 things going on. But I would love to get together sometime. So I'll talk to those folks and, uh, and see what's going on. So uh, Ellis in the chat room is saying that he might have to pay for a SharePoint conference on his own. I think we might have to uh, have a bake sale or something for, uh, for him. So that would, uh, would be great. <laughs> Eric Harlan is saying that I also enjoy random ninja punches to the throat as well. Bring it on, Eric. Bring it on. Um... All right, all right. So that's once we've all uh, recovered from the SharePoint conference and all the fun and the frivolity and, uh, and all that kind of stuff. The next month, I'm going to be back out uh, <laughs> to the West and uh, going to be at the SP TechCon April 22nd through 25th. I've not bothered to put the sessions I'm doing in here, uh, but you can go to SP TechCon and find out. And uh, would love to see you there. SharePoint conference is this big, huge extravaganza, clown, circus wheels, all that kind of stuff. Um, SP TechCon is a little smaller, uh, about uh, about a tenth of the size, I think. Much more intimate, much more, you know, hands-on, all that kind of stuff. So uh, if you're trying to figure out which one to go to, it depends, uh, you know, what uh, what your what your preference is, but. Uh, We'll be at SPTechCon as well. Again, SPTechCon.com. Finally, then in May, I'm going to be at Microsoft Tech Ed North America. That is in beautiful, sunny, humid Houston, Texas. And that is May 12th through the 15th. And for sure, we'll be doing a pre-conference session there. And I don't know about, about breakouts yet. They haven't told us anything. I uh, submitted about 100. I don't know about you other uh, folks that do speaking, but I have a, every time I submit a session to a SharePoint Saturday or a conference or whatever, it's in a Word file. I type it all in a Word file. So then the next time uh, a, a conference comes up, I just, I have all of them. I just send all those plus whatever I've thought since then. So I think to tech end, I think I submitted eight sessions or 10 sessions or something like that. Uh, so who knows what they're, uh, what they're actually going to take. Or they might just tell me to go home. They might say, you're going to come and do your pre-conference session and be on the first plane out the next morning. It could happen. It could, uh, it could happen. So if you're going to be a tech ed, tech ed's a good conference. Uh, if you are a Microsoft generalist, it's not going to be just SharePoint. It's you know it's going to be Exchange and PowerShell and Windows and security and just all those uh, all those things. So if you're not just a SharePoint person, TechEd might be the the thing for you. Uh, so go check that out. Naomi Moneypenny is in the chat room and she lives in Houston and uh, she's going to have us all party at her house. So if you can't find a place to stay, uh, you can sleep in Naomi's front yard. That's a true story. That's, that's how that goes. So, and uh, hopefully trying to get, there's a couple other conferences going on this year. I'm going to try to get those going. Uh, so, yeah, so a couple of things. Um, and I apologize, 
when I skip around with some of the, this content stuff, the chat room, the lag between my video and the chat room is about 20 seconds. So sometimes I move on from a topic and they're still uh, still getting caught up. Um, Jack Fru is saying that at the uh, SharePoint conference, since all of the evening events are, you know, the evenings are full of events, we should have a 5 a.m. breakfast adventure. <laughs> Um, you know, we, we could do that. We'll see. Uh, it, it could happen. Um, and Jared is saying not to forget the crew. So the crew, and that's K-R-E-W-E, -E, is a, a tech a tech ed group. They're all the tech eds, and it's a, it's a social thing. They're doing a bunch of stuff. You can follow them on Twitter at or they got a hashtag, hashtag the crew, but they're going to be doing something on Sunday night at Tech Ed too. So if you want to get out there uh, and do that, yes. Uh, Doug, System Center, will also be well represented at TechEd, I'm sure. Chris Gibbons mentioned that Project Server is going to be in Anaheim next week. I've spoken at Project Server Conference twice, I think, now. Great conference, especially with Project Server so heavily on uh, dependent on SharePoint. It's that that uh, community is much overlapped, so that's a, that's a great one to go to also. Um, so there we go. So I think that's everything. And like I said, there uh, there's a couple other conferences this year that I'm trying to weasel my way into. Don't have anything confirmed yet, but uh, hopefully in the next week or two, I might maybe give it about a 50% chance, have some announcements of some other places that I'll be going. So if, uh, if that works out, I'll let you guys know. So thanks to everybody. I think I did a pretty good job of staying on uh, task tonight. Had some SharePoint stuff in here. That was good. 50% uh, less pop, maybe 52%. Thanks to Jack. So uh, once again, thanks to him. Thanks to everybody in the chat room. You guys were on fire tonight, even though you were big meanies and calling me a developer. But uh, don't forget, we record this thing live every Monday night at 8.30 Central Time. That's... Uh, 9.30 East Coast and 10.30 in the Bahama, Bermuda and 6.30 West Coast time, U.S. Uh, but we record this thing live. You're uh, welcome to jump in, watch the stream live. We also have a chat room. You can go to www.toddclint.com slash netcast. There's a chat room. You can heckle me live as opposed to just screaming at your uh, computer when you listen to it uh, days later. So in the, in the chat room, there, everybody's in there, and they give me hell, and it's a, it's a great time. So thanks, everybody. I will see you guys next week. As always, if you've got you know, questions or whatever, you can hit me up on Twitter at Todd Clint. Email me at todd.clint at rackspace.com. And if it's something that I... Uh, if I know anything about it, I'll try to help you out. Thanks, everybody, and have a good night.